Welcome to Switcher Chats, music interviews brought to you by Music Matters with Daryl Craig Harris and Music Tribes Unite. Katie Daryl, how are you doing today? I'm so good. Thank you for having me. I love your background. It's very Christmassy. It's awesome. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> it's like uh, Santa Claus threw up behind me. Yeah, I had to do, I tell you, I had to do a little bit of a reset because our uh, we decided to have a roofing day today, evidently. So <laughs> it's, it's all good. <laughs> it's, I, I got to tell you, where I'm sitting, I'm looking basically out my front yard. So I've got these windows I can see. And this time awesome. of year doing Zooms, I see the Amazon guy pull up and or the UPS guy about to deliver. Right. And I'll be in the middle of one of these. And I'm like, oh, please don't ring the doorbell. No, please exactly. <laughs> Exactly. Oh, thank God he left it. It's so, I know, so you, funny. You can go funny. back and watch my Zooms with other people and like there's like anxiety over my face where I'm like, no. <laughs> I know. And I, I know I do these live, but you know, you never, you never know. Yeah. You never know what's going to happen live. So uh, um, that's the best part. Exactly. So um, you have a very interesting career. You've been on Access TV now for how many years? Almost 20 years. Right? Yeah. Goodness gracious. I started with Access TV back when it was called HDNet and the was, it was the world's first all high definition TV network. And that was around oh, wow, 2000, okay. 2001. Um, and so I've been with them since it was HDNet and then it changed its name to Access mm. TV. Um, and I, you know, I'm, I'm like the cockroach of the network. I, I won't die. <laughs> and I also know where all the bodies are buried. Well, there you go. Yeah. Job security, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. Um, so you, you're actually a Phoenix girl, right? You, you are, you're on the radio at 15 years old. Tell me about yes. that. <laughs> yes. I started in Phoenix doing a kid's radio show after school, back before like radio Disney even existed. Basically it was the first kid's radio station. Uh, awesome. I did that. And then I transitioned into working with, um, at the like the, the version of like Kiss FM in Phoenix at the time and became right. like a promo girl and then started producing the morning radio show. And then those guys got fired and moved to Texas and I followed them there and I became their their uh, sidekick chick and got, yeah. you know, into the uh, radio biz. That's sort of, I mean, that's sort of with what you do, not so much you're doing a different thing than I do, but with what you do, it's really traveling. Relocating is a big part of that, right? Jobs become available. I know you were in New York with MTV. Yeah. Um, I did MTV for a year during the uh, 2000 presidential election. It was like the whole rock the vote, choose or lose campaign, right. um, which was really, really exciting uh, to be a part of and kind of see the political landscape from a different point of view. Obviously, MTV, more music and me leaning younger. And so trying to get the right. kids out to vote and register. So, um, yeah, a lot of moving in the early days. Luckily, I um, uh, am now in Los Angeles and I've been here, gosh, almost 15 years and I feel like awesome. settled. Now I will tell you this, one of my shows before this one, so before the top 10 revealed um, on Access TV, I was doing a show called Deadline and I would travel around going to do crazy adventures everywhere. So each weekend I'd be somewhere new, I'd be like, oh, it's the uh, Tight Walkers convention in Las Vegas. Gotta grab a Southwest <laughs> ticket and go. Right, exactly. Yeah, Southwest is our friend, right? <laughs> I love them. I love them. I know. Uh, that's that's actually my favorite. Give a little shout out to Southwest. Get some free tickets, right? Heck yeah! Heck yeah! <laughs> exactly. Not a bad thing. So you also worked for TMZ. So tell me, a little, how was that experience? Because that's kind of oh crazy and wild, right? Yeah. So TMZ. What's cool about this is I started when when they launched TMZ on TV. Right. It used to only mm -hmm. be the website. Um, right. And so I started with the TV show and um, I did a lot of on camera stuff for them um, as well as I was the female voiceover. So when they would toss to the crazy packages, you know, like, Oh right. my God, there goes Britney <laughs> Spears. I was the female voice and then there was a male voice. And so I did that yeah. for about two years. Holy moly. I mean, lifting up the skirt on TMZ and seeing how that place works and it's That's run, gotta it be. Is a it's, machine. It gotta it be nuts. <laughs> high energy. It is super, super professional. And I, I mean, I think there's a lot of people out there that think, oh, they're just like running out there with cameras and shooting stuff themselves and they're not fact checking. Right. I truly, I will, anything that comes out that says it's an exclusive in a story that is broke by TMZ, I know mm -hmm. it is true because Harvey Levin is a lawyer and he doesn't right. want to get sued. And yep. he was so hardcore in that newsroom of, 
he will not publish if this is not true. So I think in the, in the entirety of TMC, like they've retracted something like only two or three stories in their history. Yeah, which is, I like, you know, that's a, it's, it, yeah, that's a fun show. It's easy to like. And I like, I see those reporters that they use. I'm like, oh my God, those guys, they must be like, they must be sitting by their phones 24 hours a day. <laughs> oh, now, that, that, now that is the downside. Uh, there's not a lot of sleep involved if you work at TMC. <laughs> Right. Yeah. So, um, so the show, you actually had a show we do, we were just talking about it because I actually did the show with you with our Garth guy thing, but you had the world's greatest tribute bands and that was on for eight seasons, right? It was quite a long time. Yeah. The world's greatest tribute bands on access TV was on for about eight seasons. I think we did like approximately 80 episodes. I mean, wow. everyone from, you know, Pink Floyd, Led Zeppelin, uh, Garth Brooks, you know, all, all these greats in the music biz have tribute bands and, and right. I learned so much from this show because obviously going into it, how it fell in my lap is I'd been doing the, the other show deadline, you know, the weird one that I was traveling mm -hmm. around for. And Mark Cuban is the owner of the, the network at the time. And he said, okay, we're done with deadline. Um, your new show is tribute bands. You're like, huh? And that was an email. <laughs> and I was like, wait, no, I, I don't even understand what that means. What does that mean? <laughs> and I had to understand what is a tribute band. Cause I thought it was a cover band. And as you know, it's not a cover band. Yeah, you, you guys. don't you don't call you don't call a tribute band a cover mm -hmm. band like that. <laughs> no, you don't. That's like that is like yeah, that's a naughty like word that. in the business. Um, which is so funny because I know so many people have emailed me um, because there's that new show on E called um, Clash of the Cover Bands or something like that, and, I, and yeah. it it drives me nuts because well, first off, it's a lot of my bands that I found, right. <laughs> so it's yeah. giving me talent, uh, but they. Um, a lot of them are not cover bands, they're tribute bands. And I and I yeah. just know that so many of the bands that probably are doing this show are just oh biting their tongue and so annoyed at the name of it because yeah I actually uh, I got called a couple times when I just started because <laughs> I was actually in Croatia the guy that our uh, Tim McGraw guy goes can you do this show in LA I'm like I wish I could but I'm not I'm not in the country but yeah oh. those shows it's funny because those shows are actually really popular people are curious about that like what is that actually what is a tribute band and, and like in Europe they don't even really understand except for Elvis, <laughs> what, uh, what that would right? actually be. <laughs> and that's what the, and that Elvis is like, it's like the easiest one to explain. Well, a cover exactly, band is kind of like, yeah. you know, tribute, like a tribute band is, you know, think of Elvis, but you're like, but you have to be like, it's the good Elvis because there's exactly. so much that goes along with like, oh, just like, you know, some guy bought a jumpsuit on eBay and comes in and goes, hobo, hobo. Right. And you're like, no, 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 no. If you are a tribute to the Beatles, your Paul McCartney plays his guitar left-handed. Like Exactly. It's yeah, it's the real deal. Um, so now you're doing, and you're actually um, executive producing and hosting um, Top 10 Revealed, which is a great show. Me and my wife Thank watch you. it all the time. Love it. It's so much fun. Thank How did you. that come about? How did you develop that? So, um, okay, as all things, all my stories seem to keep relaying back to Mark Cuban, but so Mark Cuban. Um, that's not a, that's has, not a bad thing. <laughs> no, exactly. He, um, as the owner of the network said, hey, you've done eight seasons of the world's greatest tribute bands. I think, I think we've covered all the good bands. Otherwise, you're going to start going very specific to like Ariana Grande, where you're like, eh. Um, yeah, right. No offense, but just not our demo, right? We're a classic rock station. Yeah. Um, and so he said, we're going to cancel the world's greatest tribute bands. It did great. It's no, you know, no fault to anyone other than it's run its course. What's your next idea? Again, you're like, oh, oh no, Mark Cuban's <laughs> asking me for my idea. I feel like, like I'm on Shark Tank. And it was actually my husband <laughs> who funny. he watches all, you know, NFL, ESPN, mm -hmm. all that sports stuff. And he loves the top 100 Hail Mary passes of all time, the top 50 all touchdowns right. of all time. And he's like, your network has never done a countdown show, you know? And I was like, you're right, dude, we haven't. So I pitched the top 10 revealed to Mark Cuban and we did the, uh, the pilot and here we are season four. We're about 80 some odd episodes in. We're already filming wow. for our spring season and we'll be celebrating our 100th episode. Yeah, that's such a fun show. And I mean, I love the, the guest and it's like people like out, you, people you would not expect, right? Like Steven Adler from Gun N' Roses, all these, it's a really fun mix of people. Yeah, it is. I mean, listen, like D Snyder's on all the time. Sebastian Bach, Lita Ford. Yeah, yeah, you said Steven Adler. We had Matt Sorum from Guns N' Roses as well. Right, yeah. um, Sean Stockman from Boys to Men. Uh, Carney Wilson. And then we have like some of these it's just, fun. you know, music geniuses um, that aren't in bands, but they're experts like Matt Pinfield or Lindsey mm -hmm. Parker from Yahoo. Right. So um, it's, a, it's, it's a fun show. And I love that like, 
listen, you can debate with your friends or argue with yourself when you're watching it. Like, so you're kind of like, oh, I wonder what the next song is. Right. And you learn fun facts and it's easy. Like at the end of the day, listen, if you don't agree with it, it's okay. It's only rock and roll. Like, yay. You yeah. And song. that's a show. I mean, that's a show that has legs forever, right? Because you're not going to run out of topics. <laughs> you're right. I did. I thought, okay, I think we could do two seasons. And now here we are about to hit a hundred. And I was like, oh man, I've got a list. 30 deep of ideas that are just like ideas off the top of my head, let alone if I actually right. like concentrated. So yeah, what's, let's what's go for 200. A, exactly. So you've done interviews with a ton of folks. What, what are some of the ones that are your favorites? What are the ones that can really stick out in your mind? All right. So I know, I know that's a big question. It is a big question. So twofold. So on the top 10 revealed, I really liked talking to Paul Stanley of Kiss. Right. He's a huge sure. icon. Uh, but he's a um, he's a hard nut to crack, as I would say. You know, someone like D. Snyder, Sebastian Bach, they are soundbite machines. They right. they get the game of TV of like talking a soundbite, you know, don't go on you know, play nice in the sandbox. And even if you hate the song, say, well, I know why other people like it. So they're easy right. in the chair. Paul Stanley made me work. He didn't want to give up his opinion for free type of thing where you had to really ask the right question. It's, and It's the and, New York thing, right? <laughs> yeah, but I, I appreciate that. I'm sure, you know, in media, he's been misrepresented probably a lot and he just wants to right. protect his brand. And, and I was a stranger to him. So he's like, mm, what's this girl going to ask? So I really enjoyed talking to him um, for that reason because it was the challenge. Now, I love, again, love me some D Snyder because it isn't right. a challenge. It is bantering with just a friend, someone who just is, is going to, you know, make, make my day easy. <laughs> and uh, I, and he's, I mean, for that. and he's, a, he's a believer, right? He's a believer in rock and roll. He's, he's, he he's is. all in, um, you know, I, I, yeah, he's such a guy. It feels like those guys have just been around forever, right? <laughs> they have. And I mean, I, if you haven't followed D on Twitter or Sebastian, I highly recommend it for everyone. They're really fun. They're really engaged. They banter back and forth. It's, it's a fun read. Um, what's your advice for young people that like to get into this business? I mean, do you have like interns that work on your show or what, what, we do. What, what do you, what do you, yeah, you ahead, know, what's sorry. interesting. So we do have like an intern or a PA that works with us, um, out of our Denver office. And I would mm. never have imagined that that was an, a, a real thing until the pandemic hit. And you realize right. how you can virtually work with people. You know, I would have been like, I can't work with someone out of state. So I think um, that brings up a lot of opportunities for people right now is that, you know, obviously if you're, you are a good writer and you're good at doing research and you can work from anywhere and, you know, prove that that's, that's really key right now is showing, you know, that you have the chops um, to do the job virtually anywhere. Um, oh, yeah, what about production too? Because being a producer, that's a whole nother thing, right? The whole nother level. Because <laughs> you're not you know, out there at talent. It's easy, you, well, not easy, but you just walk in, you do your thing. Yeah. Production is like, what Pro do you mean the guy? Did, what do you mean the guy didn't show up? <laughs> yes, so, I mean that is. Yeah, I mean, like, when we do our shoot week, right? So when we do bring in all these guests to shoot, I do what I call it. I call it hell week. It's not really hell. I'm talking to rock stars, but it's hell right. because <laughs> it's five days, five people a day. Wow. Each person you talk to for an hour, but it ends up being an hour and 15 minutes. The next person shows up 10 minutes later and it's another person in the chair and you're going mm -hmm. through, okay, there's 12 episodes, 10 songs per episode, 120 That's a lot. songs. Yeah, I, I only have an hour with this person. <laughs> they get to talk about 16 songs, keeping all the papers and the moving parts of, okay, he talked about this. And so so-and-so needs to talk about this. We need to balance it out. Did we have enough females on this episode? Did we have a brainiac on this episode? Did we have a rock star on this episode? So the moving pieces from the backside of production is pretty intense. And it's a grueling day. So think about it, five, five back-to-back -back interviews, keeping eye contact. And not no, it's and a lot, right? You can't zone out because you have to listen to what they answered so you have the right exactly. follow-up question. It, I, at the end of the day, I'm like, I've never been so tired from sitting in a chair listening to someone in my entire life. And then you're like, and I got to wake up and do it again. Oh, ah, that's yeah. the production side. But again, is it really Hell Week? You're talking to Paul Stanley, Katie. <laughs> I know. Yeah, exactly. That's the thing. Like when you get worn out, you get tired, like, you know, I wanted this and I got it. So here I am. <laughs> you, know <it. laughs> you know, exactly. Uh, that's it's so exciting. So season four, um, who are some of the big surprises we have coming up? Can you tell? Or uh, Oh, yeah. I have a great surprise. Ah, oh, this is an exclusive. It's an exclusive. Okay. okay. I should call um, TMZ. Wait. <laughs> so we just had, um, we're shooting, like I said, for the, the spring season, season five, right? 
And one of the new guests that we brought in is Lisa Loeb. Now, ah, okay. she is going to be new on season five, but while she was, we're still in the process of editing some of the episodes that are airing in season four. And in season four, our Valentine's Day episode is 90s breakup songs. You oh. say, I'm going to hear what I want to. Uh, you know, it was yeah, in the that's, 90s. That's a biggie. <laughs> Did it make our list? I'm not going to tell you whether it made our list or not, but I will tell you when, when Lisa yes. Loeb sat down in the chair, I said, I need to ask you some questions about some of these 90s songs that we're in the middle of our edit with. So you will mm. see her, even though she's not promoted on this season and will be highlighted as a coming in season five thing, she really mm. will make a sneak guest appearance in season four. You know what's awesome about her is she she's kept herself relevant by doing the TV commercials. She that song those songs don't go away. <laughs> like ever, ever, like ever present. Not right? only that, <laughs> you know, she looks exactly how she did back then. She's yeah. kept this look in this brand because it's beautiful and it, it's her. She's like, well, yeah. I mean, I have my I'm not like a crazy hair person anyways, but she looks great in person. Whatever she is That's doing, awesome. her moisturizers are working. Right. Can I, you should get the secret for me. And I know. I'm like, what is works. the secret? I will smear peanut butter and eggs on my face. If you're telling me that's what you're doing, because you're doing it right. Exactly. Yeah. That, 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 uh, you got to do what you got to do. <laughs> it's all good. Um, so what do you, um, what would you give as far as uh, advice to people I try to produce too? Because that's a whole nother thing. How, how did you, what was that road for you? Yeah. Producing, how to do that? I think, you know, producing is a tricky thing because a lot of people want to do it, but their brains aren't made for it. You know, it's just like, right. listen, I, I will never, I'm never going to be a guitar player. I can't do it. Like I, my right hand and my left hand are stupid, stupid little beings and they will never figure it out as much <laughs> as I really do try or with the limited amount of time that I have to try. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so yes, everyone can put their mind to anything. Sure. Go to the space, be, be a rock star, but we have to be realistic with how much time you have to put in to hone that skill. I right. have always been a crazy OCD, keep lots of lists, cross check type of gal. And that's what makes me a good producer. And I think that's what makes a good producer. Are there people out there that are producers that aren't good at that? Sure. Did, are they going to be successful for a long time? A couple of them. The others are, will fall to the wayside. So I think if you want to produce, I think, you know, really, you know, exercising that part of your brain and realizing like that you have to keep track of a lot of moving parts. Right. Um, and that there are, that you're juggling a lot of egos and attitudes. It's people always have asked me, oh, you, um, you produce the show and you host it. And I'm like, yeah, it's not that I think I'm, I'm an exceptional host. I'm a decent host. I'm a great producer and I don't want to work with any other hosts because right. they're, they're a pain in my butt. Or having somebody else produce you, right? When yeah, you have, when, when like, you know, no. when you know your vision, you know what you want to do and yeah. yeah, it's tricky. It's that's so tricky. I am, also, I'm like a producer's worst nightmare when I come in and host things because, like, I start directing myself, like, and, like looking around. And... <laughs> like, can you just let us? And I'm like, uh, -uh but you can move yeah. that light. And yeah, that's that's the hat. It's on. I can't, can't take it off. Um, how can people find you online? Thanks for asking. Um, so my social media is just my name, Katie Daryl, K A T I E D A R Y L. That's Instagram. That's Twitter. That's Facebook. Awesome. That's my website. Just go to my website, katydarrell.com, and then you can click on all the icons to find the socials. What's fun about my socials, or maybe um, exhausting, is I do it all myself, and I don't have that click on feature where like you post in one place and it just goes to all of them and it's the same right. repetitive info. I do yeah. put fresh stuff specifically at Facebook, fresh stuff specifically at Twitter. There, I think I think my Instagram, if I do post a photo on Instagram, it does go to Facebook. Like that's the only crossover. But yeah. um you know so you it's know, it's very authentic, which is was kind of what yeah. you're saying. Yeah. Cause a lot of people have publicists and they don't really interact on their with their yeah. own. Thing, I'm cheap. So, so. I'm like uh, uh, no, I, can you know, I can do this. I can do this. Yeah. But you know what too? It's like, you know, then you're it's actually feels authentic, which you're you're social does and that that's the thing I, one of the things i like Thank about you. you is that you're you're you who you are you're you're for real which is awesome <laughs> so um thank you so much for joining me i know you're busy busy and uh, i appreciate you taking the time out of course thank you for having me uh thank you for all you do in promoting the touch and revealed um and keep rocking you're a rock star yourself man world's greatest tribute bands forever yeah exactly yeah i'm, a, I'm an alum i'm an alumni uh, awesome. you are. <laughs> thank you so much katie i really appreciate it nice to see you again Awesome. Thank you so much. Cool. So that's it. It matters with Daryl Craig Harris. Thanks for joining us and catch you next time.